Hey out there, this is Thursday, March, Let's see, today's the 26th day of uh, March 2020, and it is just about, uh, oh, about 8, uh, 32, 33 in the morning here in Northern California, and as usual, I'll get into a lot of subjects, but, uh, you know, of course, I like to try to educate everyone on basic fundamental rudimentary economic principles to empower people with basic knowledge of what is valuable in our society and what is of little value and all points in between. And, uh, you know, we bandy a lot of terms about all the time, terms like capitalism and socialism, but people know very little about them. Now, before I get into this stuff, I want to start by talking about what's on everybody's mind. What the hell's going on in society all around the world? This pandemic is like something I've never seen. I was born in 1958. They say if you can still smell, though, you're okay. So, yeah, that smells nice. I can still smell just fine. And um, I'm not uh, a spring chicken, so, you know, I'm one of those people they would consider at risk for this COVID-19 coronavirus. And um, I'm not particularly concerned. I mean, you know, if we ready ourselves, I mean, we should be ready every day for it to be our last day on earth. So I don't understand why people are freaked out. Okay, period. Because I have spent a lot of my life thinking about death because it's a big deal. I mean, it's imminent is what we all face and we don't know when that day is so it should be on all of our minds we should ponder and think about it and this would help draw us closer to god we'd realize our need we need i want to live and there's no human being that can save us so you know what i mean it just comes down to just having this much faith just believe that hey you know we're part of something big here okay we're very special very unique creatures everybody can see that i mean it's night and day compared to all the other creatures on the face of the earth we're by far and away at the top of the intellectual food chain right i mean you say porpoises are smarter i mean i don't know where they figured that out i mean i know there's some very intelligent animals out there that can learn stuff and it's really cool i love it but they can't hold a candle to what humans have done show me Show me the evidence that that's the direction they're going to be more technologically advanced. Do they have toys on Mars? Well, we do. We're really pretty, pretty fascinating creatures. And where did we get all this ability? Okay, it came from somewhere. Okay, it didn't just appear. That, that doesn't make any sense. This whole idea that, you know, we just came from unthinking single cell organisms climbing out of the ooze i mean it, there, 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 there's no reason a fine swiss watch does not create itself because a workbench gets tipped over and a lot of junk fell down and wow it just you know it's happenstance it's just a quirk just a fluke i mean that's what you know pe- some people would have you believe but if you understand fundamentally that there's a god there's got to be a God. There's just way too much design, intricacy, and integrated circuitry. Look at the brain, for example, and the eyeball. More advanced than any state-of-the-art uh, camera equipment today, to this date. Okay, so we gotta, you got to believe in God. Even if it's just, yeah, that, you know, hold, keep that door open. Say, yeah, I mean, you know, if there is a God, I, I would like to know more about this God. And is it true that this God is good and all-powerful, that he loves me and he wants to save my life? And this is about eternal life. We can't get off this merry-go-round we call human existence. So somehow we've got to find a way to get comfortable with it. When you got clowns like me always talking about poignant stuff, I mean, you know, it's a downer. It's depressing sometimes. And this world is. I mean, who wants to live forever in this crap hole? I don't. I've got all sorts of complaints about organic crap. Okay, that's across the board. Everybody has to experience it. And I and I do. I bitch them up, but I talk to God about it. And I've got the answers from Scripture. And it's all right there. It happened at the fall of man, the original sin. Okay, when we eat, we ate from this metaphorical fruit, from this metaphorical tree of good and evil. We were tempted, we were lied to, told a half-truth, a deception. 
and we uh, we ate of this fruit, and we decided to know good and evil, the differences. Okay, and then we got the ensuing curse befell the earth, and all the organic suffering is explained. From death to diseases to natural disasters to it's too damned hot, it's too damned cold. You got insects that can kill you. We got this predator and prey paradigm that's rife throughout the fauna, right? I mean, even the flora, too. I mean, there's a lot of plants that will choke out other plants. So that's a predatorial plant, predatorial fauna, even. But all that stuff is as a result. Anything negative that's organic, that's across the board, okay, that everybody has to deal with, okay, is a result of that original sin. There's no other way I can explain it. Because if some atheist came up to me and I started proselytizing and preaching to him, and he said, you know what? You keep your God crap, he could tell me. Look me straight in the eyes. He'd say, you know what? I think of this all-loving, all-powerful God you talk of. I think he's a feckless a-hole. Got that, buddy? That's what he could tell me. And, and, I, and I'd be completely taken aback. I, I would have no retort, okay? I'd say, you know what? You're right. If I didn't know, if I didn't have a story to explain it, I don't know how other faiths explain it. Buddhists or Judaistic Jews or Muslims or Hindus or any other faith out there. I don't know how they explain it. I haven't heard it explained by any other faith. But this is fundamental to understand that this is where all this organic suffering came from. So when something's bugging you in life, like the COVID-19 is freaking everybody, it's freaking me out. I mean, it's osmosis. If everybody's freaked out and stressed out and they're taking all the toilet paper and freaked out about paying their bills and all this, you think I'm going to skate or you or anybody? No, we're all going to feel it. They're your fellow human beings. You're, it's a God put a fail safe in you, a default position. It's called a conscience. You care. He said, love one another, love even your enemy. This is a command. If we don't do it, we're gonna, you're not going to get away with it. It's like defying God. You can't defy God and get away with it. If you defy your human, fellow human being and say, well, his suffering is separate from mine. I'm not feeling it directly, so that's his problem. You know, he's just got karmic issues or he can't deal with it. He's weak link in the chain of humanity. Yeah, humanity is only strong, as strong as its weakest link. And if your attitude is just weed you out of the garden, you know, just get them out, just let them die under the bridge somewhere, what do you think is going to happen on Judgment Day? You think I'm not a friend to my worst enemy? What do I want from people? I'm trying to be God-like, Christ-like. I'm trying to get advice from the Holy Spirit of truth. And that's all I want to give. I want to be sanctified someday. I want to be able to stand before my Creator and my belief system to hold water, and I want yours to hold water. And the most wicked men are the one God's after because he can forgive a huge debt. Okay, I mean, I can't understand everything about God. His goodness reaches to the highest heavens. It's why he's known for his amazing grace. And he wants us to emulate him and imitate him and try to be more like him and grow into that character, that nature, that personality. We're his children, and he wants us to adopt that same attitude toward one another. Forget age. Don't be an ageist. doesn't matter what your age is. You can still be like somebody's parent. Whether you're a kid trying to be a parent to an old person, hey, it all runs full circle anyhow. They say you experience a second childhood as you get older anyhow. A lot of people get into that innocent and that, you know, childlike kind of phase in their life in their, in their later years. And it's a beautiful thing. It's a good, healthy thing. But we should all have that attitude toward each other. And if we had that, do you think that we would be neglecting the needs of others worse than the animals? I mean, we're told on the news, hey, bring your pets in. It's too damn hot. It's too damn cold. Don't be a cruel. Don't. We're going to give you a citation for not taking care of your animals. And yet we're letting human beings, and in America, native-born citizens. And we're saying you're horrible. You're un-American if you don't want all the destitute immigrants to come in. And somehow they're all finding housing. It's primarily, I'm, I, I'm not, I'm the least racist guy you'll ever meet. I promise you. Okay. I could care less the color of illegal immigration. Okay, that's fine. They're desperate people. These are, a lot of them are refugees from, from violence. I get it. 
A lot of that violence is something that, from the experts I believe that have investigated it, Hillary and uh, and and Barack, okay, they got this thing going down there in Latin America, and likely they appeal to corruptible leadership, which is so easy. We're all money lovers, so you know it shouldn't surprise anybody that people get in these positions of power and they just grab all the dough. They, hey, be. be I'm a kid in the candy shop. What do you expect? What, I'm going to steal it all. And then there's, there's unrest because they upset the economy. They're stealing from the working class, the productive class, and putting in their own pockets. What do you expect? And then, the, oh, there's a bunch of socialists uprising and all. Oh, oh, oh. But, you know, we're socialists and we're liberal here, but we don't believe in a universal basic income and, oh, this and that, and the next thing, and, oh, my God, we got to, oh, if you on welfare, we got to make sure you're really poor. You better be really, really, really poor and desperate. But yet there's no outreach to these homeless people. Just the other day I met this guy, a very desperate guy, you're on the verge of suicide. I feel like an unpaid social worker. I'm going out there. Very, this, this guy was, he was beside himself. He's going through all kinds of stuff. He's homeless. But he's got, I mean, more than a lot of the homeless guys. But this guy was still, nonetheless, on the verge of suicide. I helped the guy out a little bit, what I could. I tried to treat him like my own son. He needed his truck when he needs a fuel pump. And he's working on, he's got to cut out part of the bed to access the fuel pump on top of the fuel tank. It's the method he's choosing because he could just lift the bed up. But it's, uh, the bolts are rusted on or something. And he told me and he can't do it that way. Uh, but, you know, I, I was a, I've got a AAA card, so I had him towed to another desk closer to his storage unit, which is better for him, he says. And, uh, you know, but uh, we were talking, and uh, talking to this guy, I mean, you know, he's been through some stuff. This guy started telling me some stuff I won't go into, but he began bawling with me. I mean, it was tough. I got my own. I'm just as human as anybody. I tried to give this guy the best advice I could, just like I try to give anybody the best advice I can. But at some point, we've got to turn to God. In Scripture, it talks about going boldly before his throne. we got to do this. you got to say, look, there's, I can't depend on a human being to save my soul. Okay, That's up to you. That's your choice. That's your prerogative to have right values, to be on the right side of history, to make right choices, especially on the important ones. Because he talked to me, he told me a story about he just almost blew a guy's head off, uh, the guy messing with his wife and... He told me how his sister was attacked and killed by some madman on, on meth with a sword. I'm listening to all this stuff. This guy needed to dump, man. And I got it all. I mean, I'm standing out in the freezing cold yesterday morning. You know, I'm helping this guy and getting the tow truck involved and all this. But, you know, for a while we talked and talked. And I just felt like a psychiatrist when I'm not. I'm not even a counselor. I can't even give the guy advice that from somebody that's had schooling and how to give advice to somebody like this. He said he's got six kids in Texas. Uh, he's the oldest one, I think he said, was 18 or something. And the guy's 43 years old. And he's here in Chico. He just got laid off from his job. He was a cook. He was a chef, he said, at some restaurant. I can't remember which one here in Chico. Uh, you know, so he's just really going through it. And I tried to say, look, dude, the check's in the mail. Trump's promising you 1200 bucks. Expect that at least because the guy's desperate. He's also got this little Chevy S10. It's a 1996 truck. And he's also got this little motorcycle he's trying to sell. Okay. And uh, the guy's in dire straits. I mean, but I don't know what got him there. We talked a little and he did disclose that he drinks and he likes to drink before he goes back. You know, I said, listen, Wade. You know, you, that's that's not going to help you, man. It's time to get real with God. I mean, 